dragged me to bed the way girlfriends typically drag people to bed, and I should probably stop talking about this right now. Okay, so how many of you guys have been to a previous Hope before? Okay, let's, let's, let's do the countdown here. How many of you guys were at the last Hope? All right, how many? Okay, Ted, we're not talking about Burning Man here. You can calm down now. How many of you guys were at Hope number six? Same difference. How many of you guys were at the fifth Hope? H2K2? H2K? Beyond Hope? Did I forget one? Which, which one did I forget? Oh, the first Hope. Hackers on Planet Earth. Who was there? Okay, I wasn't. So wait, one person? One, one person? Two? Three? Of, cor of course Robert Steele was there. Four, oh, oh, of course, and Kupo, who's not doing a very good job of being backstage. Um, awesome. That's great. How many of you guys, I know traditionally, the tradition has been hope happens every two years. And Emmanuel's probably going to kill me for asking this, but how many of you guys would attend a Hackers on Planet Earth at this time next year? Okay, yes, finally. I can win that argument on the mailing list now. Okay, thank you guys. Um, other announcements? Yeah, this is the last talk of the evening. Um, and I'm going to introduce uh, Mr. Steele and give my, my story about him in just a second. But uh, Kupo actually has an... Huh, Kush. See, I'm thinking Kupo because I have to, he's the last person that I have to give t-shirts to. Oh, that also reminds me, department heads and people who work for OpenAMD, Network, um, Radio Statler, and everybody else who's not part of the core volunteer corps, we're distributing t-shirts. Also, regular volunteers that have gone, gotten their 10 hours in can also get their t-shirts. Also, we're tracking volunteer hours. We've had certain volunteers who have worked in excess of 30 hours up to this point on the second day of the conference. Give them a huge round of applause. Is aesthetics in the room right now? Okay, no, is Kupo in the room right now? Coop, where is he? He's not here? Okay. Um, but no, actually, Kush has a couple of things uh, to talk about, so if I could get Kush up on the stage here real quickly. Um, and that's about, you got your radio off and everything like that? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, what, what was this announcement that you had, something that you were desperately talk, wanted to talk about? Nicole, can you come up here, please? Our relationship has taken many, many turns for the good, for the better, for the best. I love you, and will you marry me? Thank God she said yes. Thank you guys. Okay, so, so I have a little story about Mr. Steele. Everybody knows what they're in for here, right? How many people have been witness to this Saturday night tradition at Hackers on Planet Earth before? Okay. How many people have managed to sit through an entire one? Really? How many people are, are aware of the steel drinking game? Okay, I got, I got a bigger one on that. But actually, um, 
I, I have a personal connection here to our next speaker. Can, can I tell this story? You can tell any story, but I need uh, the internet. Oh, um. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yep, right there. <laughs> Hackers on Planet Earth, where we leave the internet lying around on the floor. <laughs> Traditional, isn't it? Yes, we do keep the tubes from leaking, don't we? Unless WikiLeaks is involved, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, so it was actually my first Hackers on Planet Earth conference. Um, I was here with a couple of friends of mine from Detroit, um, and I've forgotten all of their handles right now because I call them all by their real names today. Renderman. Ren Renderman's at everywhere. I, I remember the whole Render Man Must Die stickers. How many, does anybody have an extra Render Man Must Die sticker? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Am I dating myself right now? Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. So it was our very, my very first Hackers on Planet Earth, and of course I went in on a hotel room with a bunch of my friends, and we ended up in this really weird, oddly size-shaped room that was really big, and that had like, an extra couple of rooms attached to it, which were just totally empty, which we thought was kind of weird. And of course, being college students, one of our first times in a hotel room this big, we thought, we have to throw an awesome party. So we found all of our friends from DEF CON, we found all of our friends that we knew from IRC and everybody like this, and everybody bought in on a gigantic cache of liquor. At about maybe 8.30, we went around and we literally drained the ice out of all of the machines in the hotel and filled up the bathtub just completely full of ice. And then put all of the beer, all of the liquor, everything in there. And we actually, for some reason, had this crazy Australian dude who was, I don't know, he, I don't know what his deal was, if he was on speed or something, but his whole function for like four or five hours that night was to continue raiding all of the ice machines on the rest of the floor and keeping our bathtub full of ice. Now, we wouldn't have had a rocking party had Steel not brought his crew from the talk into the room, people who just wanted to talk to him more and more and more. And we were partying, I think, until 7 or 8 a.m. I think, actually, hotel housekeeping was the one that stopped our party because there was nobody else on our floor <laughs> to clean the rooms up. So that, that's, that made my first Hope experience special. How many of you guys have collected a story, something like that, at this conference or previous Hackers on Planet Earth conference? Really? That, that's it? All right, so just everybody, this is, it's, this is a, going to be a phenomenal, phenomenal experience. I hope you guys stick around for everything and prepare to have your minds blown. I proudly introduce to you Mr. Steel. Give him a huge round of applause and get your club mate. Okay, where do I do audio? Audio is here? Yeah. Okay. Um, no, this is good if this works for you. Um, I'm getting too old for midnight starts. Uh, so we should try 10 next time, uh, 2200. Anyway, what I'd like to try and do is be a little more interactive and, and maybe a little more responsive to what the group wants in the way of question areas. So we can go everywhere from who done it for 9-11 to Dick Cheney's cross-dressing uh, to anything at all that you want. Now, do we only have one microphone? Why don't I, I just want to do a quick round of kind of shout out what you want to talk about tonight. What was that? JFK. All right, JFK. What else? Dick Cheney cross dressing. JFK, Dick Cheney. Cyber war. Cyber war, okay, and we can talk about the cyber scam. What? Perfect. Perfect citizens. Well, that's you guys. Uh, okay, 9-11, BP, BP big time, okay. What was the tossing one? Dwarf tossing. I was not there. Uh, okay, faking the moon, it was faked, yes, it was done in a TV studio here in New York. What? I'm up to seventh generation warfare, but okay. What? Halliburton, okay. Nobody's mentioned the Rothschilds yet. Okay, 
Anybody interested in, in um, Tafa? All right, all right. Now all the lunatics be quiet and just a few serious people. Room service, absolutely. <laughs> Okay, all right, all right, we're good, we're good. Okay, we're there. Uh, who? Uh, you know what, okay, I will announce that I'm running for president. This is the only time I will announce that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but there's a difference between me and Ross Perot. One, I'm not a little shit. And two, um, you've got to get me on all 50 ballots, and no, I won't come if you don't. All right, let's, um, let's kind of take it from the top. As best I can tell, the United States is run by Goldman Sachs on behalf of the Rothschilds. Um, and all of our income taxes are basically channeled in a manner that disconnects us from the way in which the money is spent. And in essence, Congress has been bought. But actually, in fairness to the people buying Congress, it's Congress that shakes them down, not the other way around. The standard rate on the Hill is 5%. Any project, any earmark that Congress delivers, they expect 5% into the pack of the member that sponsored the program or the contract or whatever, okay? So we not only have a corrupt Congress, but under Dick Cheney we have a Congress that uh, consists of foot soldiers. They've abdicated their Article I responsibility, which is why I personally recommend to you that you vote out every single motherfucker now in Congress. Uh, it's called the Constitution. It starts with a C. All right, now, the bad news is Congress and the governors have so hosed the electoral process as to make it impossible for independents, libertarians, and others to get on the ballot. And I strongly recommend to you a book by one of Ralph Nader's senior aides called The Grand Illusion, um, Understanding the Two-Party Tyranny. And even here in Washington, there, I mean here in New York, there have been a couple of breakouts. Peter Peterson, a very wealthy man, uh, wrote a book called Running on Empty, how the two parties are betraying America and what we can do about it. Well, unfortunately, nobody in New York and nobody in Washington actually wants to do anything about it. And one of the things you have to understand is that people like Ron Paul, however much we might love him, are part of what's called the controlled opposition. They're there as window dressing. Uh, Obama was a, a road show, okay? Obama broke his promise to McCain, he took money, and he hasn't accounted for 300 million of the 750 million he spent. Um, Buckminster Fuller said the White House is theater, and he's absolutely right. Uh, and I did not realize this until I myself found that my misplaced confidence in Obama uh, was utterly destroyed by Rahm Emanuel on one hand and David Axelrod on the other. This guy is surrounded by a pogamist and a pollster, okay? And his decisions are articulated in a manner that is erudite idiocy. Uh, there is nothing sensible about Barack Obama. There's nothing sensible about Michelle Obama. It troubles me that she tells everyone to go on vacation in Louisiana and then heads for Maine. These people are hypocrites, but so are the Bush family, so are the Clinton family. These people are all part of a mafia that began with MacArthur's capturing the Japanese gold, a story told in a wonderful book by Peggy and uh, Sterling Seagraves called Gold Warriors. Uh, there's been an illicit gold fund run out of treasury since the end of World War II, and it was used to issue gold certificates and to um, 
what happened to the soda that was going to come with that? Oh, good. Okay, because I need to mainline some caffeine here. But I was going to do a YouTube ad for that stuff, but then they told me it tasted like shit, so I didn't. <laughs> but drink it anyway. Um, all right, so the bottom line here is I think we're at a point in American history where we literally need a general strike. Uh, and by general strike, I mean a nonviolent stay home one day. Uh, and unfortunately, I have tried very hard for the last eight years to get people like Ron Paul and Ralph Nader, and it may be that I don't need this. Uh, if you guys decide you want to take a tour of the internet, we'll, tr we'll try it, but I can talk from memory. Um, I've tried to get Ron Paul and Ralph Nader and Cynthia McKinney and Jackie Saylett to play nicely together, and they won't do it. They absolutely will not come together and do the one simple thing that would basically nail Congress, which is demand electoral reform in time for 2010. This is not rocket science. Electoral reform. There are at least four things we can do for, for 2010, including instant runoff, voting on a holiday so the poor don't have to juggle bus schedules, and of course, ballot access for anybody that can come up with the minimum signatures. This is our country, and we have allowed it to be carpet bagged uh, out of our possession. So electoral reform is the one thing that Ron Paul and Ralph Nader and Cynthia McKinney and Jackie Salit and Mike Bloomberg, if he ever decides to get serious about running for president, uh, should all be talking about. Electoral reform. It's very, very simple. Barack Obama was elected by 30% of the eligible voters. I think it was 54.6 or 56.4 of the eligible voters that voted. And if John McCain had not been surrounded by Bushies, whose job it was to sabotage his campaign, he would have come out and sided with the House Republicans who were demonstrating a modicum of common sense and said, over my dead fucking body, will you bail out Wall Street? I would have frozen evictions and foreclosures, and I would have insured every American from the bottom up. And I guarantee you it would have cost a tenth of what Wall Street has cost us. So that alone is treason against the American public by both parties. And that alone demands that we eliminate the Republican and Democratic parties from the face of this electoral process. I'm on my best behavior. The medications really are working. <laughs> um. <laughs> So starting at the very top, we've lost control of the United States. We've lost control of the Treasury. The government is out of control. And we're at a point now where stuff has to be done. Yes, sir. Do you want to try and get a video? or That's my power cord. This is a really shitty connection that won't screw in. Or you want to get rid of it. Okay. Well, I guess I'm not using my computer. Um, All right. I, I really was hoping to give you guys some, some interesting slides and stuff, but you, you can help me. I'm, I'm interested in being helped. I need help. I need a lot of help. <laughs> All right, so, so basically what, what we have, and, and it's really remarkable, uh, Huxley really got it right in 1984 and in Animal Farm. Um, we've become a cheating society. Uh, and by the way, I speak in book titles, okay? So when I kind of have a phrase like cheating society, it's really a book I've reviewed on Amazon. And if you go to phibetaiota.net, and I simply picked that after my freeobama.net site didn't arouse a lot of excitement. Um, uh, PhiBetaIota.net is where I have all my book reviews and I have pointers to the 30,000 pages at OSS.net and to the start of the Earth Intelligence Network, which is an IRS uh, 501c3. We can give you a letter if you want to donate things. And Jay-Z is selling what's left of our books back there 
and he's based in New York, and I encourage you to look at his website, reconfigure.org, where he also has the t-shirt. He spent a year researching that t-shirt. I have never seen anyone do a better job of deep research than he has done on the true cost of that t-shirt. How many people are familiar with the true cost meme? Holy shit, you're a bunch of dumb fucks. Uh, okay, sorry, I know you come here to be abused by me, and I, I do it with love. Um, let me, uh, let me bring you up to date on what's happening in the world. Um, what do I need to do with wireless and cell phones? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, and I really want to try and be a little bit more interactive, but I do want to get the questions on there. And I also want to say thank you, whoever it is that took my last spy improv and turned it into like 50 really cool audio sound bites with text captions. I have some books to give you. Um, I'm really grateful and humbled by the fact that someone would spend that much time making sense out of four hours of, of uh, stream of consciousness talking. Um, we have kind of been put into a position where um, we have no say. I mean, we, the reason I titled my brief uh, two days ago, one day ago, Hacking Humanity, is we've taken the humanity out of politics, we've taken the humanity out of business, we've taken the humanity out of everything. And what's really cool is that the one inexhaustible resource we have on the face of this planet is the human brain. And the human brain can create infinite wealth. And just to digress back for a second to cell phones, we're finding out that cell phones are killing bees, which is going to wipe out our agricultural pollination cycle. Okay? And I'm serious. This is the one intelligent thing CNN has done in the last 20 years. Uh, okay. It's a start. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and I want to thank Nick, too. Uh, he, he, uh, he's the head of volunteers. And I didn't realize he was going to hold it over my head for the rest of my life, but uh, we did, in fact, meet over a bathtub. And, um, and Nick let me have his bed for two hours, and I didn't use the sheets. Uh, so, Nick, your bed's still clean, and uh, thank you for giving me a nap. Um, really, Nick just showed some class there. Thank you. Um, so I think we really have to, have to get a grip on ourselves. And to kind of make this point about humanity and its potential, C.K. Prahalad, who should get the Nobel Prize, I mean, there have been like two or three Nobel Prizes given recently that are, that are really good. One was to Janos. Um, Prahalad should get another one. I won't mention the two idiots that got Nobel Prizes, one of them for 10 days in office. Um, I mean, these people are shameless. They're prostituting themselves. Buckminster Fuller wrote a book titled Integrity. Integrity is about more than honor. It's about feedback loops. It's about data without errors. It's about, I subtitled my new book, Clarity, Diversity, Integrity, Sustainability. So coming back to C.K. Prahalad, he's pointed out that capitalism is based on the one billion rich whose aggregate income is one trillion. And I'll come back to true cost in a second because I am shocked that a group of this intelligence doesn't really have a grip on that. Um, the four to five billion poor people have an aggregate annual income of four trillion. So we have capitalism based on one billion rich, one trillion market, they're buying sub-zero fridges every two years. An African refrigerator costs two dollars and consists of a cement pot with a long neck and air gap, another cement pot with a long neck, and you bury this in the ground and it keeps meat fresh for five days. And Janus's latest book on social business is certainly worth reading. The bottom line here is we have been so busy screwing the bottom of the pyramid, we haven't realized that they're the only thing that's gonna save us. And so that's why the Earth Intelligence Network came together and conceptualized the idea of educating the poor one cell call at a time. And Nokia now has a cell phone that uh, operates on ambient energy, so it doesn't need an electrical recharge at night. This is very cool. Uh, the Chinese have cell towers that are solar and wind-powered, 
And at Burning Man, which I'm hoping to go to, my first one, uh, I'll be in the village that's being set up by Dr. Dr. Dave Warner. Uh, we tease him mercifully, mercilessly. Uh, he's an MD, PhD, uh, neurosurgeon with some real psychological problems. Uh, and, and I love him for that. Uh, he's really one of the coolest guys I know. He and Eric Rasmussen created Strong Angel. He created Tuzel, which is an analytic toolkit on a flash drive, and I want to improve on that because where I'm going with the world brain is we should all be part of the world brain and we should all have a, a structured method for, for information sharing and sense making. Um, so we really have got to get a grip. Um, and now to just talk about true cost for a minute and then I'll let you guys intervene on me a second and we'll, then we'll do JFK. Um, a gallon of gas costs $3.50, $4, whatever. That's what you pay at the pump. Prior to BP, Exxon and these others were externalizing $12 a gallon in costs. So Jay-Z, when he did this t-shirt, and absolutely, totally blown away with admiration, he did the true cost of that white cotton t-shirt in terms of water, the number of gallons it took to grow the cotton, wash it, ship it, so forth. Uh, fuel, the fuel that was used up by the machines harvesting the cotton and so forth, the fuel used to transport it. Child labor at 50 cents a day. Uh, that's what's true cost, okay? So true cost actually gets down. I mean, it takes more water to make the plastic that this Coke comes in than the, the water contained in the Coke. In fact, Coca-Cola is stealing water worldwide. Uh, Minnesota just threw them out because they wanted to come in and dig down into the aquifer and export Minnesota's water as Coke. New well. And New Hampshire as well, thank you. And we are part of a collective, and, and I really want to, to encourage um, interventions from the audience. Uh, if they're sensible, shout them out uh, so that we can get kind of a collective back and forth going here. I'd like to see this work. Uh, shall I go to JFK? All right, uh, a little bit of BP first. Uh, BP, by the way, was responsible for the Exxon Valdez. Um, and one of the interesting things about BP is they've perfected the art of making promises they don't keep. Um, essentially, the US government, which is trying to micromanage stuff, and we can get into complexity theory and all that other good stuff, uh, and I can also do some IT stuff, some security stuff, some cyber scam stuff. Um, Logical people in the federal government understand the risks associated with undersea drilling and so forth, and BP and others, when they're given these leases, are required to commit to having 24-7 emergency response teams within four hours of any possible breach, fully trained crews, ready to go, uh, booms and everything, ready to contain this within you know 12 hours, whatever. And what they do is they, they set all that up and then they let it atrophy to the point that it doesn't exist anymore. Okay, so essentially BP violated the public trust and of course BP is operating under a public charter. What's that? Could you be the wall? What? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, he just poured his beer on his dick is what he said. Oh. <laughs> I hope she likes beer. Uh. All right, so JFK. Uh, my take on JFK, based on reading a number of books, including a book that's very popular at Phi Beta Iota, the review of, of JFK, Who Killed Him and Why It Matters, I believe that JFK was killed by Cuban exiles trained and equipped by the Central Intelligence Agency, and that at least select members of the Central Intelligence Agency were actively complicit to include individuals in the Office of Technical Services that created fraudulent secret service credentials that allowed the perpetrators to escape. And I believe that will come out in time, just as it is now coming out that the, um, we all knew the Gulf of Tonkin was a fraud. Um, and it's now coming out that the Gulf of Tonkin was seriously debated within government enormous doubts existed, and secrecy was used to deceive Congress and the public. 
Now, in the case of Iraq, Dick Cheney didn't bother with secrecy. He just used 935 documented lies. And we let him get away with it. Okay, I highly recommend a book called The Weapons of Mass Deception. Don't be fooled by the cartoon cover. It's a superb book. Um, so JFK, Martin Luther King, an act of state. I believe the FBI ordered him killed and the army helped. They provided the sniper. Um, so we've done some pretty bad things, not only to ourselves. Yes, sir. More than one. Oswald did not test at all. Oswald was a patsy, at least one. I mean, but yeah, two and one, and I think he was killed from in front. Okay. Um, and so all of this stuff is starting to come out, but what's absolutely fascinating to me is the way in which the public sits silently and allows whitewashes to happen. I mean, talking about the 9-11 whitewash, the, the national technical security, whatever the hell they are, won't release the findings from the World Trade Center controlled demolitions by Larry Silverstein, who had Rudy Giuliani, who had the dump trucks lined up the day before the accident. Oops. And they all had GPS so that they could track where the rubble went. And the firefighters rioted. They called him Scoop and Dump Giuliani because he was scooping and dumping. And we, have, and we now have, courtesy of the German hackers, we now have all of the uh, cell phone calls on 9-11 and all of the reports of bombs from 9-11. And that also came out across the radio waves and the TV channels. And there were a number of news broadcasters that basically announced things before they happened because they were being fed a news feed. When you get down to doing a serious time analysis of 9-11, I think you will find that it was not only allowed to happen, but that Dick Cheney, three months in advance, scheduled a counterterrorism accident so he could control our response and ensure that we did not interfere with it. There's a serious possibility that there were unmanned aerial vehicle controls on those two jets, and the WTC-7 was the final control point and it was brought down by controlled demolitions. Um, and by the way, it wasn't hit by anything, okay? Um, so I, I'm very concerned, and I like to try and keep my credibility with, with those of you that, that think conspiracy theory is evil, uh, by saying that we don't know for certain, but I absolutely agree with Mike Rupert and others, there is more than enough information out there to tell us, number one, it was whitewashed and not properly investigated, and number two, Larry Silverstein, Rudy Giuliani, and Dick Cheney should be indicted, and I would like to see Dick Cheney hung before he dies. What's that? Actually, I'm told he likes leather. Um, a, a very prominent bisexual who is a really great partier told me this personally, and I think he was speaking from... <laughs> we won't mention any names. Um, no, but he does do 14-year-old boys. Um, okay. Um, no more guessing. Uh, all right, let's talk about cyber war for a little bit. Is that all right? All right, I'm a dumb shit that doesn't know anything about technology, but I'm smart enough to count how many people are doing deep code research in this country, and the number is 67. There are 67 people in the United States of America doing deep code research, and 12 of those are doing defensive deep code research. How do you spend $12 billion on 67 people? You don't. This is a cyber scam, and I have written a detailed article in Homeland Security Today that identifies the 67 people by Research Center, none of which have major grants from the Department of Homeland Stupidity or from NSA or any other part of the U.S. government. Uh, what you mean by deep code I'd like someone in the audience to define deep code research. Um, the way it was explained to me is source code root. I mean, right down at the very bottom, which is where do you hide shit at the very bottom in source code? Like I say, I'm not a technical person. What? Who wants to define deep code research? 
Okay, binary analysis works for me. Also, I mean, you can hide a lot of stuff in hardware. Um, that's why I believe in open source hardware, not just open source software. Um, open everything. So I'm really unconcerned with the details. What matters to me is that there are only, let's say, 500 people in the United States that are actually doing serious code research. And Washington is planning to spend $12 billion on SCIC, which totally fucked up Trailblazer for NSA, uh, and SRA, and uh, CSC. All these companies are scams. They basically hire what we call butts in seats. These are US citizens with clearances who don't know jack shit about anything, but they can be billed, okay? And this is a scam. Um, and part of the problem we have is that the US government is now run by contractors. Uh, contractors are now occupying vital positions at every level of the national intelligence community, the national security community. We even have the occasional Australian uh, who's given way too much authority um, just because they like his accent. Um, King Cullen comes to mind. Uh, you know, he helped betray us, hose up counterinsurgency. We should talk about Afghanistan too. IT security is very, very serious. In 1994, Jim Anderson from NSA and Win Schwartow and um, Bill Kiley and I put together a memo to the National Information, National NII, National Information Infrastructure. Okay, and we sent this to Marty Harris and we said, Marty, you have a problem coming up. This is 1994 now, back when I was told I was on the lunatic fringe for thinking things like this. Uh, we said, Marty, you need to spend a billion dollars on information security. You need to make sure that SCADA systems, for example, are not on the internet. Well, I don't know whether Marty ever read the letter, but it is on my website if he wants to read it, uh, if he hasn't died since then. Um, this is stuff people know. I mean, the US government was briefed about peak oil and, and, uh, in 1974. And it knew about peak oil, and it knows about peak water, and Congress has basically said, we're going to leave that for someone else because we don't want to make hard decisions. So I think information security is very, very important, and the easiest way to achieve it, in my uneducated view, is by going with open source. Um, I mean, I love the Linux guys when they say, put enough eyeballs, any bug is visible. Uh, and I think the same is true for true cost information, the same is true for corruption, uh, the same is true for absolutely every aspect of managing complex affairs. And let me just make a short digression into complexity and resilience. The world has gotten too complicated for Weberian stovepipe management. Okay? Basically, Washington is trying to regulate things it doesn't understand and can't control because it's not in real time. And they have not done the bottom-up resilience building that's needed. All right, so what we really have to think about is how do you make the whole thing open and how do you establish standards? For example, I've tried three times with John Chambers um, to get him to build an individual router. Why can't we have application-oriented networks at our individual laptops so that we can apply the rules to who sees what and how it's handled and so forth? And uh, I don't know much about Grub and things like that, but I personally believe that we should be able to install information security, including content control and, and attributes and reachback routing and all of that at the point of creation. Uh, so somebody smarter than me is, is going to figure that out. Now, does anyone want to jump up with a burning question, or shall I move to dwarf tossing? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, can you use the microphone? I'm just going to inject a topic. Uh, go, go ahead and use the microphone, inject a topic. And you know, there's so many of you here, I feel so bad that this isn't some kind of circle. How many of you know about open space technology? Wow. I'm going to help you. Um, what are you going to inject? I was, I was thinking um, the national debt yeah. and um, possibly legalizing substances to eliminate it. 
I love it. I mean, marijuana absolutely should be legalized. And it, and, but, but hear me clearly, it should not be legalized so white boys can get high legally. It should be legalized so we stop putting blacks in prison. Okay? Yeah. Um, I mean, I personally want to eliminate the personal income tax um, because it's a, it's a fraud. I mean, we should be doing consumption taxes. We should be doing the Tobin tax, financial taxes, things like that. Interject, sir. Fraud in voting machines and its use in subverting recent elections. Uh, it's massive. Anybody stupid enough to accept an electronic voting machine deserves the result they get. Um, and there is a member in the audience here who is telling me that some very good things are going to happen in that area, and I'm really excited about that. Uh, you know, computers were built without talking to librarians. I mean, this is the problem I have with engineers, is they don't recognize that there are people out there that know stuff that's relevant to the metal that they're bending. Um, and so we've kind of lost sight of what computers are. Interject, sir, please. What, what I don't understand is, uh, you know, I read all the stuff about the uh, vote hacking and, and uh, made sense to me. What happened in 2006 and 2008? Did, did, did uh, you know, the Republican Party have the ability to steal the election? And if so, why didn't? Yes. I mean, first off, the election in 2000 was stolen uh, by Jeb Bush, and everybody knew this in advance. Um, Greg Palast, a friend of mine who I admire very much as a journalist, he did the story, breaking it in The Observer in England three months ahead of time. And I am told by someone who knows someone who was in the room that Warren Christopher brought the offer to Gore from Wall Street which basically said, if you fight this, we're never going to give you a speaking fee in your lifetime. Uh, if you don't fight this, you will be rich beyond your dreams. And uh, I don't think they threw in the Nobel Prize, but so it came to pass. <laughs> What's that? Uh, OK, hang on. That's a fraud. Maurice Strong is a criminal. Um, and, um, but in 2004, the Ohio state governor basically put all the good machines in the pro-Bush districts and all the bad machines in the black districts, the Democratic districts, and that election was stolen also. However, you have to give John Kerry credit. Anybody with a fucking haircut like that <laughs> is not qualified to be anything, all right? And he's married to a world-class bitch, okay? So the man is toast. And, and that's what I mean by controlled opposition, okay? I mean, Kerry was basically a fool. He's not a fool. He's a very smart man. And he knows that George Bush is sexually conflicted and has other issues, okay? Uh, because he was there. Um, but the reality is, these elections are just played out. I wrote a book, Election 2008, Lipstick on the Pig. Uh, and it's all free online. Now, I noticed there's a group out here, so very quickly, let me get your questions and interjections, and then we'll move on. Are there any other microphones? Uh, there's one at the front and one in the middle. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so, hi, I'm from Toronto. Uh, we just had the G20, and I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on the black block, if you know about them. On the black? Block. So, uh, some other people have said that they're uh, allowed to exist or uh, are, are fed by the police. And which is the black blog? Anarchists. Anarchists. They, they, they break windows, and there's some reason there's no cops around, but hundreds of cameras. The, the sergeant of police commented that they, uh, they couldn't disclose their use of those techniques. Yeah, well, I don't want to bash the Canadians. Um, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look, as soon as global warming arrives, we're taking over your country, okay? <laughs> We're just waiting for it to get warmer. Uh, uh, and, and by the way, folks, Quebec and Scotland are the only two places that are going to have clean water if we don't get our act together. Um, so I'm starting to learn French. J'aime bien le Quebec. So uh, look, I, I'm in Guatemala where the police are a major part of the problem. Uh, and if you read uh, one of my reviews of Ed Lansdale's book, the CIA has a long history of creating false insurgencies, including the Red Brigades in Italy, in order to then turn the government away from so-called communism toward their preferred fascism. Okay, um, 
And um, the CIA also imported so many Nazis into this country that, that we have Otto Reich and Karl Rove and, uh, and others of their ilk. Uh, we also have way too many double national Israeli US citizens with top secret clearances and policy positions uh, where I think they should be recircumcised or whatever the opposite is. Uh, <laughs> You know, and so what if we miss a little, uh, <laughs> you know? But really, we're stupid. Uh, so quick interjection there, quick interjection here, and then let's come back. Sure, I just wanted to uh, talk for a moment about uh, prohibition kind of as a tool uh, to maintain an oppressed, kind of criminalized underclass. And uh, in reference to what you were saying before about intelligence being outsourced, uh, an interesting thing to note, I think, is that Eric Prince was uh, just not just recently, but it was revealed that at one point in the not too distant past, he was actually uh, on the payroll of the CIA. He was doing intelligence work, Eric Prince being the founder and CEO yeah, yeah, of Blackwater. Yeah, yeah. And, well, you know, CIA is not very discriminating in who it hires. Um, they really do deal with a lot of fools and they throw money around. I mean, CIA had to close 20 of the 21 companies that it created to do non-official cover. They don't know how to run a business. Um, this is true, it's in, it's in the media. And uh, by the way, I'm way too smart to make a security mistake up here, okay? Uh, sober or drunk. Um, and so nothing I say is a secret. It's just common sense, it's out in the open. I uh, honor my secrecy, uh, my lifetime secrecy agreement. Uh, the man bringing drugs? No? Oh, no? Oh, God. I am so disappointed. <laughs> I was sitting here breathless with expectations. <laughs> it's just a goddamn bag. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, CIA throws money around. NSA throws money around. Uh, we're wasting $75 billion a year, and General Tony Zinni, one of the, one of the last serious adults that we have, uh, says that that provides, at best, 4% of what the president and others need to know. And when I did my second graduate thesis on what a U.S. embassy could collect and what got back to Washington, I realized that Washington was running on 2% of the relevant available information. What I did not realize was that Washington doesn't really give a shit about whether it has information or not because it's running on ideology, okay? And it's running on who pays for what. So come interject here. Or I'm just curious. Um, I mean, we talk a lot about uh, the puppets, the puppeteers, all that sort of stuff, and, and, and ultimately coming down to are we taking back the government? And I, I would, I, this is a thought that I've gone over a lot in my head, and I'm, I'm all non, I have no answers. And I'd love to hear more of your real deep thoughts on how we as people can take back the local governments and build up from there and we totally, I mean, without them, because I'm tired of giving my energy to that system. Thank you, and I hope others that have deep, passionate concerns will bring them out here because, you know, I'm, I'm not the guy with all the answers. I just read more books than you do. Um, and it's because I have no life. Um, but <laughs> what did he say? Huh? Um, I'm working on that. Uh, I'm figuring about 2012, uh, you know. But that's all right. Actually, sex is way too much trouble unless you've got the affection to go with it, in my humble opinion. Um, oh, I know. Don't feel sorry for me. It's good. Um, do you want me to get deeply personal? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so shall we come back to the second American Revolution or still focus on my gut? <laughs> um, this system has gone so far down the toilet tubes that I'm not sure anything less than a tax revolt and a general strike will do. Um, I also believe we have the power I mean, I deal with some extreme rightists in Latin America, and, and they like to think that uh, the, the, the higher end, the wealthier guys like to think that machine guns will solve it. The lower end likes to just take a machete and leave a severed head in front of whatever ministry they're pissed off at that day. Um, there aren't enough machine guns on the planet to kill every cockroach that's going to come out of the woodwork. And we're the cockroaches. Okay. Huh? Need more machine guns. Yeah, oh no, precision machine guns. DARPA's working on that. 
with a little cockroach bullet, okay? This is the place DARPA, I, I just can't believe it, The DARPA is spending money on a robot that won't violate human rights. <laughs> I don't make this stuff up. Um, you know, if we, spent, if we spent a fraction of what we spend on war on peace, I can solve every problem on the planet for $230 billion a year. And we're spending $1.3 trillion on, on not just, we're not even spending it on war. We're spending it on contractors, okay? Uh, and we just had a wonderful report come out on the small arms. We're still playing with Tinker Toys on the battlefield. The, uh, the M1, A1, whatever the hell they're using now in Afghanistan is basically effective out to 300 meters and the Taliban is picking us apart from 500 meters. Uh, and oh, by the way, these are the guys we trained because the Taliban runs everyone through the U.S. Army training program so they can fatten them up a little bit and learn all of our tactics and then they go back out and give them back to us. Kind of, that makes no sense at all. But we're not smart enough to figure that out. That's why biometrics is so big, um, you know. Uh, and here in the U.S., we like to train the gangs, okay? I mean, the Maras now, my good buddies in the Mars, they figured out it's not cool to have tattoos because that kind of highlights the fact that you're a major league criminal who's willing to kill for $10, okay? Uh, so now they're learning how to dress up and get haircuts. Uh, and they join the U.S. Army and they become really good at this stuff and then they go practice their trade in Central America. Um, you know, what kind of country trains its enemies to kill us? Um, so, I'm sorry, I've, I've gotten distracted. Let me see, dwarf tossing. Um. I have an interjection. What? I have something, I have something. Yes. Uh, so, you already named my big fear factor right now is water, Marcellus shale drilling. So wait, wait, uh, water? So, the Marcellus shale drilling? Oh yeah, that's idiocy. Yeah, 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 please, please talk about that and how it's tied in with other companies that are now stealing water. All right, can somebody get this computer to work so that I can show some slides? Um, I'll stand here. All right, let me, I'll, I'm turning it on now. I know how to do that. My kids laugh at me. Uh, my oldest son just got accepted at the Rochester Institute of Technology. I just have to figure out which banks to rob so he can go there. Um, but I'm very proud of him. Uh, he's the son that I brought here. Was it two years ago or four years ago? Two? Patrick James, yes. Can we, let's see. It should just work. Oh, that's what she said. Uh, okay, <laughs> come on up here. <laughs> Woo! All right, now show me the internet. Are we on F5 or? Oh, duh. All right, okay, good, good, good. Now, uh, it says it's connected, but I, I couldn't get online. I really love the water, I really love the water question. You know, one of the things I'd like to talk about, and, and I really encourage you smart people to go look at oss.net forward slash. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a soda, they're bringing me more. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, all right, this is Phi Beta Iota. What? Okay. Okay, uh, this is Phi Beta Iota and I read in 98 categories, so you can go down and, uh, and find book reviews. Okay, for instance, Empire Sorrows. Uh, games, modeling, future, information operations, 101 books, information society, information technology. So this, these are like cliff notes for smart people. Um, and uh, I write summative reviews. So I encourage you to go there. Now what I want to do, I think, is go to graphics and that will give us some stuff to talk about. Um, water is one of 12 core policies. Yes, interject while I'm looking. Oh no, go ahead. You sure? Oh, well, yeah, I'm never going to finish on water, but uh, okay. Um, this is true. Actually, I have, I have to be in Washington at 3 o'clock for a cookout. So 5 from 3 is what? Uh, 10? Okay. No problem. Um, I really, I'm, I'm here until the last man standing. Um, okay. 
here are the 10 high-level threats to humanity. And you'll notice that, uh, let's see if this, what's that? All right, can you guys see this? No, you can't, can you? Um, your presentation ones were larger. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Hold on, here we go. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, all right. And, you know, everything I do is free online. Uh, if you decide to buy the books, Jay-Z is out there selling the books and the T-shirts. Um, and, and, of course, I'd be grateful if you did. Um, but... Um, but everything is free online. All right, this is the OSINT staff briefing, which has some pretty cool graphics in it. And I'll just use one, and then we'll come to you uh, very quickly. Um, the problem with, with government and with corporations is, number one, they don't have a strategic analytic model. Uh, and number two, they, uh, they don't actually do analysis. This is, the, uh, this is the graphic. The UN... It's not as bad, it is as bad actually as most people think, but only because it listens to its member states. Um, once the UN separates itself from the member states that lie to it and populate it with spies, and I don't mind the spies taking people to lunch, I do mind the spies being really incompetent at their cover jobs. Because what that means is the UN is one-third nepotism and one-third spies that don't know what to do in a humanitarian crisis and then one-third real people that are carrying the entire UN on their back, okay? Um, but the UN came up with a high-level threat panel, came up with the 10 high-level threats to humanity. And I really respect this, and Brent Scowcroft was part of this group. So poverty, disease, ecology, can you all see that in the back? F5. Oh, oh, you're teaching me shit. All right, hang on. Oh, please, don't talk dirty. All right, control shift. I try that. This is a great brief, by the way. Uh, and unfortunately, it did not get me the job that I wanted, which, okay. All right, so 10 high-level threats to humanity, and then I, I was about to sell my company for 10 million, and I was gonna give five to my wife and five to my nonprofit, which Jay-Z is running. But I recruited 24 really high-value people, including Mitch Ratcliffe and John Raymer, a bunch of good people out of Seattle. And uh, we, basically looked at the presidential transition things for the last 25 years and came up with 12 policies that really matter that must be addressed in tandem from agriculture through water. For example, it makes no sense to use water we don't have to grow grain we can't eat to fuel cars that should be running on natural gas from Canada or should actually be melted down and turned into train wheels. Okay. Um, so this is, this is holistic analysis, and I've created four major strategic analytic models in my lifetime. And it, it, it stuns me that the U.S. government and CIA in particular and major corporations are completely inept. How do we find Monsanto, GMO, agriculture? Um, that's a really, really good question. Uh, the question is, how do we fight Monsanto and so forth? I mean, this whole thing of, of one generation seeds is criminal. That's, that's a, you can't, you can't, all right? Look, at some point, hang on, you gotta stand in line, because at some point, at some point, we're gonna have to understand that the laws are illegal. Yes. Okay, um, and we're gonna have to go with common sense. Now, please interject here. You were uh, talking about Afghanistan a little while ago. I was going to ask if uh, his name escapes me, the general that just recently got fired, uh, what you might have to say about that. McChrystal. Oh, McChrystal, McChrystal. Exactly. There you go, yeah. McChrystal is an extremely competent colonel that got promoted above his grade. Um, and that's most of our flag officers, most of our admirals. They've won the beauty contest. They're housebroken. Uh, they're willing to confuse their oath to support the Constitution with they substitute loyalty to the chain of command. All right. When we swear an oath to the Constitution, we swear an oath to defend it against all enemies, domestic and foreign. And I do believe domestic comes first. Okay. 
So that for me basically means the Republican Party, the Democratic Party, every political appointee in government, um, and most certainly any president dumb enough to not actually try and do intelligence-driven government. And it's not about dumb. Obama's very smart. He's simply been bought and paid for. And so has Bill Bradley. Bill Bradley is working for one of the top Wall Street firms. Uh, he basically sold out. And all of these guys kind of see the tea leaves and they decide we're not worth fighting for. Okay? That's the bottom line on Bill Bradley. We were not worth fighting for. And that really hurts me. I take it personally. Uh, interjection. Related to the topic of fiat currency. Uh, I'm sorry, speak up, please. Related to the topic of fiat currency, how much uh, current control is there in this uh, country, in the government, the military, and perhaps business by the Masons? I don't know. Uh, but I will tell you that I think the Rothschilds firmly control uh, the New York Federal Reserve and the uh, National Federal Reserve, which is neither federal nor a reserve, and the Secretary of the Treasury. If you look at who's been Secretary of the Treasury for the last five or six administrations, it has always been someone from Goldman Sachs. Um, and so what, what I really see is a very deliberate plan to devalue the U.S. dollar, but they've already moved all their assets overseas. These guys are building bunkers in Dubai. Okay, they've already got their 75 virgins. It's, I, th I think they went to West Virginia or someplace. Uh, you know, maybe that's the wrong state. But uh, <laughs> they've got their virgins set up and waiting for them, and in Dick Cheney's case, both. Uh, you know, I mean, so uh, our money is worthless. Uh, and it really frosts me. I, I still remember, and okay, I'm dating myself now, I would get 35 cents to go see a movie and buy popcorn. 25 cents for the movie and 10 cents for the popcorn. Who else remembers that? All right, all right. Oh, we got four old guys in the room. Okay. What? Did you have fire? What did he say? You had fire. Did you have fire back then? Had fire been started? Oh. That's a hard question. Uh, go on. The reason about the uh, Masons, I ask, uh, when we look at a map of Washington, D.C., you can, of course, go to Bing, Google Earth, Google yeah. Maps, and you see the big pentagram amplifying its power into the White House, Yeah. plus the other Masonic symbols. Well, I do, I, do believe that, I do believe that Washington was laid out in a Masonic pattern, and I absolutely love these, um, these uh, Dan Brown movies and stuff. And, I, I, you know, I mean, it's really interesting because, number one, the, the Rothschilds and company did not plan on the nuclear bomb. The nuclear bomb messed up their plans because it kind of made war unprofitable for a large number of people. And so they had to back off from nuclear and, and invent low-intensity conflict. Okay, and if you read my review of the book on Lansdale where the Philippines, basically, we invented terrorists and in, in Vietnam, we bombed Buddhist temples, okay? And so basically, we've done a lot of evil, or a lot of evil has been done in our name. Uh, there's a book that I reviewed, uh, I think it's called Rule by Secrecy. And the last chapter, yeah, the last chapter is about aliens. And, and Emmanuel is mentioned. Um, and... Uh, it's, it's a very, very good book. In my review, I did not mention the alien parts. I will tell you, I absolutely believe in extraterrestrial intelligence. And I also believe with the gentleman who was on TV a few months ago who thinks we're under quarantine because we scare them. Uh, I mean, we're just like an out of control Borg. You will be assimilated. Yes, sir. Uh, in your lifetime, do you think that you'll see a North American Union? The short answer is no. I think I'll see Vermont secede from the Union first. I'll take that. All right. There are 5,000 secession movements around the world. And indigenous peoples, and I really do want to talk about what we can learn from indigenous peoples and how much we've ignored. Sir, would you like to interject? Sure. I just had a, a couple questions. Um, Nassam Taleb's book, The Blaps Tuan, did you read it? Yes. What did you think of it? I liked it. Uh, it, it was, for me, very, very interesting. Um, one of the problems that we have is that industrial society tends to build up its attention 
capability toward what it knows. Mm. And it's really rotten at weak signals. And it's also really rotten at um, forecasting, and it's really rotten at sharing information or making connections across uh, boundaries. So I liked it. Um, one of the things I also like is the precautionary principle. But let me ask you, what did you think of it, and what kind of point are you trying to make? Well, besides him being a bit of a blowhard, uh, I think it was... It Authors was, usually are. Yeah. Uh, it was a, a very interesting read, but the reason I bring it up is I got this talk, uh, question in my talk, and I wanted to pose it to you. In doing a risk analysis, how, what, at what point do we stop adding like the ridiculously improbable uh, events that are massively uh, valuable? So... Uh, EMPs going off, things like that. Is there a cutoff point at which we should stop worrying about them because they're so infinitesimally probable? Or should we include everything, including zombies? Well, it's, I, some of my best friends are zombies. Um, I actually would flip the thing on you. Uh, I mean, take the cell phones and bees. Uh, you know, there's a scientific principle, the precautionary principle. Uh, and, I mean, we're our own worst enemy. And so what I think we should be focusing on is the obvious. What can we not do that we're doing to ourselves now? And until we've cracked that one, forget about all the infinitesimal stuff. Uh, there's an excellent book by Charles Perrow, who also wrote High Tech, uh, what did he write? What was the first title? Um, high Risk, uh, Living with High Risk Technology, whatever. But he's written a book called Catastrophe in which he points out that one chemical disaster from one chlorine tank that is already uh, rusted out at the bottom on this New Jersey turnpike going into New York City, I mean, that is worse than a thousand terrorist incidents. Um, what we do every day to ourselves in toxins, not just electronic trash, but what we do with food, the subsidies that we provide uh, to cattle that shit in our spinach, uh, what? Yeah, I mean, oil spills, you know, all of this stuff is insane. I mean, it really is literally insane. Um, and so this strategic analytic model, these two little red things here, is where the U.S. government is putting all of your money. And it's not really putting your money against the threats. It's putting your money into contractors who pay congressmen. And in fairness to the contractors, it's the congressmen that are shaking down the contractors, not the contractors trying to bribe the congressmen. Okay, so I mean, America is the root of corruption on this planet, in my opinion, uh, and that's what we've got to get at. So I would change your question and basically say, let's get back to fundamentals and, and stop putting a bullet in our head while we worry about syphilis in our toes. Was that kind of, I'm sorry, I overreached on that one, I blew it. Um, Thank you. Over here, sir. Uh. Well, I kind of have a burning, deep burning question to ask, but I also would really like to uh, see you get to your slides and to uh, hear you talk about dwarf tossing. So, I actually am going to... Do we have a dwarf in the room? How about, a small uh, girl will do? Well, let's uh, wrap up this round and maybe, maybe the next round. <laughs> All right. Seriously, I'd really like to... Okay. Go ahead. No, but what's your burning question? Go with it. Just go with Diversity it. Diversity matters. Okay. It's, okay, dude, it's just this. It's like... Dude, I haven't been called dude since the 60s. <laughs> you, well, you seem like a good guy. I'm, I'm feeling you. I mean, I've been reading your stuff. I hope you're not feeling me. No. <laughs> okay. You did call you dude. You say you have a lot of basic truths on, like, the human level, okay? I get that, I get that. But back in, you know, the reality-based community, you seem to have a way of putting things out there as like factual that just aren't so. Give me an example. So, for, well, for example, yesterday you were saying that the um, Obama campaign had gathered $750 million in financing, of which $300, $300 million is unaccounted for. So... That was also today, perhaps. Okay, so I, so, did, it, I, mean, I did it twice. So, other, other than Are you own, saying that's untrue? I'm asking you, other, other than your own ass, do you actually have a factual source? I read it in that, a factual source. Which was? 
I'm very, very sorry, okay. but I did not take notes. However, Just the, that the things you're making a very heavy, very heavy handed assertion. It's time you're for not, you to go to bed. Um, that, is that your answer to question when someone? No, I'm actually, I'm actually going to Google for the answer, okay? I know how to Google for the answer. Let's go see ahead and Google for up. the answer, and I'll go to bed. All right. Okay, good. Uh, let me I just get to... Uh, I'll be at me, the pub, but I mean... No, you know, I mean, you're offensive in, in a way, because uh, I'm here to try and titillate you, and I'm so sorry I didn't bring a Wall Street Journal to stick up your ass. Um, uh, Hold on, we'll get there. Go ahead. I'm waiting. Obama, 300 million income. One blogger doesn't count. Hit the feeling lucky button. <laughs> Wait, what was that? Hit the. Hit the feeling lucky button. You think? It says voy a tener suerte. You even have to Google it. That means you just really didn't even really. You just kind of thought this was true. You didn't. No, Excuse me, but when you've read all 1,600 of my book reviews, get back to me. Uh, contributions unaccounted for. You know, that's uh, more like Kenny Raise It. Um, <laughs> It's, it's, uh, it's really up to you, uh, because I can spend the rest of the night doing this kind of stuff, or I can move fast. Uh, if someone wants to search for it and then bring it up here, uh, that would be a public service of at least one. Uh, so, you know, it's out there. Um, I mean, are you aware that he promised he would use public campaign financing and then broke that, that promise? What you said. No, I'm asking you. Are you aware of that? I'm aware of that, but that's huh. not. Okay, so that that fact, you have you got something to prove it? All right, let's move on. Yes, sir. Go on, and yes, healthcare. We should talk about healthcare. I'm adding that right after dwarfs. Um, I wanted to uh, ask you a question regarding uh, Afghanistan, and that is uh, perhaps drawing on your experience as both an intelligence officer and as a former infantryman. And that is, doesn't the Western presence in Afghanistan hand Al-Qaeda exactly what they want? Well, first off, Al-Qaeda is not there anymore. Uh, it's just the Taliban whom we created in 1990. And oh, by the way, every dollar they get comes courtesy of us. Uh, we took opium from zero to 80% of the world supply. We enriched Musharraf in Pakistan because that's where the number four opium, I mean, where the opium becomes number four heroin. Um, and the bottom line is we should not be in Afghanistan, nor should we be in Iraq. Um, I, will, I, will, I will go a step further. Uh, the U.S., Haiti is an excellent example of how screwed up the U.S. government and the U.S. military are. Um, on day one in Haiti, I started blogging about peace jumpers, which is a concept I've been discussing with the colonel who created, and I'm gonna, you guys will go through your whole line as soon as we're done here. Um, basically, Haiti was an immediate problem of water, um, uh, basic food, followed by sanitation supplies, followed by tentage. And then it was a secondary problem of bringing in a ton of stuff through six airports and six ports. The U.S. military was only able to find one port and one airport. How they missed the other five, I do not know. Uh, but the reality is Southcom decided that they needed to send in 20,000 troops with rifles and a long logistics tail rather than focus on delivering the basics. Okay. Um, 
So what we have in the US government, and Bob Gates should know better. Oh, God bless you, sir. <laughs> come on up here, come on up here. I want them to see your face. Uh, here, I want you to take that and uh, this might be goofy. Might be goofy, all right, what I'm reading is, well, no, wait, there's another way to do it. I will, no, no, leave that there and I'll look for it on my yeah, own because just, you've given uh, me. Obamashrug.com. Can somebody get a picture here? <laughs> okay, uh, hold on, hold on, I need the, I need the title. Um, Bookmarks. See, this is an example of collective intelligence. Um, the group is greater than the individual. Obama uh, just Obamashrug.com. Obama what? Obamashrug.com. Well, let me do the title. That's, that's more fun because it's easier for others to replicate. To most likely avoid, uh, avoid FEC audit. And here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Nope. No, 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 no. It is some second one. Oh, Obama shrugged. Yeah. It is some yeah. blog, but. You guys are wonderful. Um, okay, thank you very, yes, very sir. much. You are wonderful. Um, okay, um, I think this will do. Uh, so there it is. Yes, bravo, bravo, bravo. You know, when I, when I wrote the article in Whole Earth Review uh, called E3I, Ethics, Ecology, Evolution, and Intelligence, an Alternative Paradigm for National Security, it was circulated on the seventh floor at CIA. And uh, Ross Stapleton Gray, who's now very comfortable in California, uh, told me that Sandra Kruzman said, this confirms Steele's place on the lunatic fringe. Um, I am used to being called a lunatic. I am used to being questioned. Uh, and I just hope that this crowd is having fun because I really care about trying to get this kind of stuff out on the table. Um, and I believe Obama has missed a precious opportunity because had he actually gotten a good staff and had he actually chosen to play a nonpartisan game, he not only could have been reelected, he could have repealed term limits for himself. Uh, he had an opportunity to, to uh, bring the country together, and so did Bush. I mean, Bush is a well-meaning dolt, and um, he really did think of himself as a uniter, but Karl Rove and Dick Cheney just wiped him out. Um, so there was nothing he could do. All right, so very quickly going, hang on, very, no, you're done. Very quickly, going back to water, um, you have to do the whole thing. You, you, <laughs> Did you say again? <laughs> okay. Um, let me uh, let me get back to that briefing because there is. Um, what did I want to show you guys? Um, Shoot. All right, I'll, I'll leave it alone for now. Uh, I want to very quickly run through your points back there and then come up here and then we'll do a little dwarf thing and some health care and... Uh, oh, water. Um, oh, yeah, you know what? I really do want that briefing. Hang on a second. Um, DOD, DOD, OSINT brief, because it's, it's such a fundamental thing. Um, you have to analyze everything. I mean, Robert Acoff is one of my favorite people, and he likes to say that uh, you got to stop doing the wrong thing righter, which is what we're trying to do. And you got to do the right things, okay? And uh, let's just see what we got here. Um, I, want you to, I want you to see this one chart. Um, oh, sent human. Yeah, let's go down here. Uh, popular posts are both uh, all time and seven days. Um, and here we are. So these are, these are the ones I really recommend to you, like my human intelligence monograph, um, the um, book Intelligence for Earth, free online. Uh, here's the one on WTC collapse data that the US government won't release. Okay, here we go. DOD OSINT leadership and staff briefings. Uh, these are the ones I prepared in my, in my competition for the position of czar for open source intelligence. I was not even interviewed, even though I'm the pope for open source intelligence. 
and General Clapper and General Burgess basically gave up their integrity on that one. Um, and I feel sorry for them. Uh, now, let me just show you this, um, this holistic slide, which I hope is in this briefing. Uh, because what you have to do is you have to see the 10 threats and you have to see the 12 policies and then you have to consider water or corruption or energy in relation to all of them. Because what's good for one part of the system may be very bad for another part of the system, such as using water to flush oil or, uh, you know, there's this wonderful book, Diet for a Small Planet, and its basic point is that a pound of beef requires 5,000 pounds of water to put on your plate, whereas a tomato requires 20. And oh, by the way, the tomato doesn't shit in your spinach. Okay? Uh, so it's, it's really quite, quite fascinating. Um, no, I am not. Um, but I have given up booze uh, and gambling, and I never smoked. Uh, and I'm moving toward being a vegetarian. I'm just waiting for it to taste better. Uh, <laughs> I, I can help with that if you like. Oh, you can. Tempe. What? Tempe. No, no, you gotta stop the soy. Soy is, is pseudoestrogen. It fucks with our. Yeah, it's poison. All right. What's that F five stuff? All right, look at this. Look at this, and this will close kind of water. Um, energy, time. Time is the one thing you cannot buy nor replace. Uh, that comes out of Colin Gray's modern strategy. Uh, changes to the planet that used to take 10,000 years now take three years. So we have to get to real-time science. The problem is, um, and I have a slide I can show you that Dick Clavin and Brad Ashton created, we fragmented knowledge. I mean, the, the old adage, we know everything there is to know about nothing. Uh, the humanities are all over the lot. Science is all over the lot. The social scientists are I'm trying to think of an appropriate phrase. Um, hmm. Um, incredibly stupid um, is, I'm sorry, it's very weak, but I mean, social science is just nothing. It's, it's, it's abysmal. Uh, and so you have to look at all of these things in connection with one another uh, because everything matters. For example, the poor are the biggest threat to environmental degradation, okay? Not corporations. The water that we as individuals waste while shaving is much greater than what corporations waste. In fact, corporations are starting to get in touch with true cost. Um, what was the other thing that you guys didn't know about? Biomimicry? No. Open space. Oh, open space technology. If, forgive me, I'm going to take just one second to talk about open space technology. Um, Harrison Owen is a brilliant man, and he invented open space technology, and I'd love to see hackers do this one of these days, which is basically everybody shows up in one big room, Everybody who has a compelling issue or topic, and maybe we could do this with my session in two years. Uh, what's that? I don't know, but basically everyone shows up, everyone has a pressing issue, writes it on a piece of paper. You take an hour to read the issues, and then those are posted. And then you sign up, and based on the sign up, uh, you do groups, and the person who posted it then brings a report out, and ideally you also have a wiki so you'll have a distributed worldwide network that's also participating. And so it's a self-organizing collective mind, and it works. Peggy, Peggy Holman has a new book out on emerging evolutionary consciousness. Tom Atlee has reflections on uh, evolutionary consciousness. Uh, so it really works. Uh, so I, I encourage you to think about open space technology. Uh, I don't know why he put the word technology in there, uh, but it's basically open space community mind building, and it's extraordinarily impressive, and it's vastly better than, than program structures. All right, let's run real quick through your issues, and then up here, and then I'll go on again. Ah, now we're talking. Now we're talking. Thank you. Okay, just very quickly, you guys, and then we'll come up here. Sure. Thoughts on Jesse Ventura? I love him. I love them. Jesse Ventura and Sarah Palin are my dream team. Um, 
Now, come on, I take Sarah Palin seriously. Uh, the Bush campaign, and, and I'm sorry, it's the McCain campaign, but the Bushies, you know, I tried to get through to McCain on a couple of things and failed miserably. Sarah Palin should never, never, ever have been represented as someone who reads, okay? <laughs> this was a tactical mistake, and I think it was deliberate. It was the Bush campaign's way of kind of demeaning her. Sarah Palin is her own woman, She's legitimately won the governorship in, in Alaska against a couple of male assholes. And um, she should have been America's mom. And after doing her wonderful speech, she said, I said, look, folks, I don't know shit about Shinola, but I absolutely guarantee you I'm going to be the last person to nag John McCain before he goes to bed. And he will hear from you through me. And that, for me, works. I absolutely trust Sarah Palin to make a pain in the ass of herself uh, <laughs> all day in front of the president. And, and the president needs someone like that. Uh, when Lee Iacocca was thinking about running for president, someone came in and said, well, these are your positions. And he kicked them in the head and threw them out the door. That's the kind of president we need. Okay? And so vice presidents should be heard from. And unfortunately, vice presidents today are, are one down from the guy that cleans the toilet in the White House. Uh, so it's not good. Um, go on again, let's clean up that row. I got in a little late, so I'm not sure if you covered this. I did. You, you may have discussed corporate ineptitude and its governance over a blinded society. I'm not sure. But uh, did you mention the Ixtoc disaster? No. What is it? The Ixtoc. The Ixtoc oil disaster of 1979. No. It happened, it happened a little thing called the, the yeah, Gulf yeah. of Mexico. We, we missed that one. Yeah. In a, have, have people Wikipedia that. It was basically verbatim exactly what happened with BP happened in June of uh, 1978 off of the Gulf of Mexico, in the Gulf of Mexico, off of the Mexican side. Same company owned the well, same problems, and it took them 10 months to stop the oil from spilling into the Gulf. Uh, and, I, they, and they used things like junk shots and attempted capping and attempted relief well drilling and... No, no, I'm, not I, sure, I'm not sure if science is really caught up in 30, no, it's, no, no, 30 no, no, years. Me. It's, not about, it's not about science. And, and my briefing is now online at, at Phi Beta Iota. Um, and I'm just going to show you one slide. Because what we have is what's called information asymmetries. Um, and these are deliberate. And what's interesting is that the cell phones are, are starting to eliminate those information asymmetries. Um, and but real quick, though, if anybody wanted to check it out, it's Ixtoc. So okay, how, 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 thank how the, you. How the Behind hell, you. How do you spell that? Stop, I, I, stop, stop. Next. I-X-T-O-C. Stop. Next. Next. Uh, the question is, is Al-Qaeda, uh, the, at the uh, best case, the CIA's... Uh, Pitbull gone bad? Uh, the short and, the, yeah, the short answer is no. The Saudis funded Al-Qaeda. CIA did not. We, didn't we create the name, fund them, and train them? Well, the base is a translation, and I'm not, I'm not a, uh, a supreme expert on this, uh, but my understanding, having read most of the books and, and talked, I've actually, I'm friends with Milt Bearden and Jack Devine, and uh, Milt was the chief of station for Afghanistan and Pakistan, and Jack was the, uh, Jack was the guy who managed the Afghan um, task force which uh, sent stuff in. Oh, here we go. Okay, now this is a problem that we have. Yeah, uh, shift, actually mine does it on F5, but okay, but it doesn't go right to the page. Um, what we've allowed to happen, this is the t-shirt the thing that I did not have in the brief the other day. Um, what we have allowed to happen is all of these things. And these are all books. They're absolutely wonderful. Forbidden Knowledge, Lost History, Manufacturing Consent, Missing Information. Okay, this is where you guys come in. We hack the truth. We get the truth on the table. We use cell phones to inform. We no longer allow CNN to be piped into elevators. Okay. Yeah. Cell phone what? Inform on us. Well, this is true, but I, but yes, I, that, that's absolutely true. But in, in, in Central America, they've solved that problem. Everybody has 10 SIM cards. 
and they trade them like baseball cards. Um, so there are ways around that, and I really do think that we have to protect privacy. Privacy is absolutely vital, uh, and, and I think that's the kind of stuff you guys should be thinking about. From where I sit, hackers have grown up, um, and uh, they ignored me in 1994 when I told them to create a, a public site that put every vulnerability on display 30 days after the company was given notice. Um, but I really think these are the tough issues that we have to deal with. Cell phones are killing bees. Bees are essential to the agricultural cycle. We should be raising holy hell about that. Uh, but again, this whole idea of controlled opposition, you know, CNN does a story, everyone says, okay, that's covered, and we move on. Um, so this is the stuff we've got to deal with. Uh, more back there, and then we'll come up here. Have you had a chance to read Creature from Jekyll Island? No, I have not. Excellent, excellent read. Okay, and one of the things I've started doing is putting uh, guest uh, reviews on Phi Beta I at all. I'll take a look at that book. Yes, sir. So I got one more. You talked about yesterday uh, open source intelligence, and uh, we had an amazing talk this afternoon from uh, WikiLeaks. Um, I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on WikiLeaks. Well, on the one hand, they've been very irresponsible uh, in, in penetrating for penetrating's sake. Uh, and they've done a few things that my friend Stephen Aftergood of Secrecy News at the Federal um, Federation of American Scientists doesn't like, and I respect that. If Steve is not happy with WikiLeaks, they should pay attention. However, WikiLeaks is an inherently democratic thing, and I personally support the individual who leaked the uh, helicopter video and the 150,000 cables. Um, and the reason I support that individual, whatever his motives, is our government does not have carte blanche to lie, cheat, and steal in our name. And so we need to get to the bottom of that. And the historians for the State Department are very upset that CIA is ignoring the law with respect to declassifying information without which you cannot write the foreign policy history of the United States. If you really look at it closely, CIA is at the root of many of our problems around the world, including overthrowing a democratic election in Iran and installing a dictator in Guatemala. Um, CIA is, I'm very ashamed to say, uh, Tom Hayden really screwed this up big time, and I sent him a direct fax at the time, so I know he knew what he was doing. Um, the United States of America is best pals with 42 of the 44 dictators on the planet. I recommend uh, Ambassador Mark Palmer's book, or my review of it. Every, every book I mention, I've reviewed. Um, he's, he's written a wonderful book called Breaking the Real Axis of Eagle. I can put every dictator out of business in five years. We offer them a very graceful exit plan that gives all of them 10 to 20, 30 million dollars. They'll never have to worry. We can give that to them in a generational trust, three, six generations out. And the ones that don't agree, we kill them. Uh, but, <laughs> But one bullet, one man. We should not have to carpet bomb a village looking for somebody. Yeah, well, no, 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 no. I really, I, there's some dictators who are really good guys, you know. I mean, no. the, the point is, no. I tell you what I've learned. What I've learned is you never want to put someone's back to the wall, okay? And so the bottom line is it's vastly cheaper to have a nonviolent exit strategy than it is to put everybody on alert because they think you're coming to get them. Yeah, and, and so the bottom line is I am a merciless bastard, but I am also a calculating merciless bastard. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, nonviolence really does work. Okay, uh, let's come up here real quick. Uh, a little bit of a thank you to, to uh, exposing, not, not just exposing some of the truths and the reality, but also um, charging us to actually go ahead and, and seek them out ourselves. <sighs> Um, you really inspired that in me several years ago. Thank you. Um, but a big part of that, um, which is a bit of a call to action to everyone here, um, is the, um, the clouds that are put in our lives. And it starts with our food. I thought you were going to talk about Google trying to be the cloud. Well, the, I, mean, the, I mean, it starts with our food. It starts with yeah. the things that we take into ourselves. Yes. And these are the things that create the deceptions that then come up with the real world. The real world is the matrix that has been presented to ourselves. So if we want to see the real world, we need to take out those clouds that we're seeing. See I'm not gonna hold TV. hands with you, but I agree. Uh, no, actually, you know, food, the, the, we're poisoning ourselves and we're poisoning our children. Uh, I just reviewed a wonderful book by a woman called um, 
Uh, it, it was basically, her kids didn't get to watch TV, they didn't get immunization, and they were homeschooled. And they turned out to be really nice kids. Um, and case. What's that? Corner case. Well, no, that wasn't the name of the book, but but just go review, look for on Phi Beta Iota. One of the things I really like about WordPress is the search engine works uh, within the uh, within the thing. So you can go into Phi Beta Iota and search for review homeschooled and and get to uh, what you're looking for. So let's stop there because you've done your commercial, and and it's one I share uh, a view on. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I'm going to go back to uh, Bradley Manning and the uh, the WikiLeaks. Yeah. Leaker. Yeah, yeah. In regard to the diplomatic cable specifically, um, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that it might have been indiscriminate to leak all that information without having reviewed it all. At what point should we be classifying the information? Because the system's obviously being abused right now. Yes. What are the guidelines for actually classifying information in a perfect in intelligence world? Well, I mean, at CIA, they don't even bother to classify uh, anything because it's assumed that everything, including your pizza order, is classified. <laughs> it, it might reveal how many fat people you have, um, but, uh, which is a lot. Um, the bottom line here is that uh, Rodney McDaniel at Harvard in the 60s, it might have been, it might have been the 90s, I forget, he came out and said publicly, and he was the executive secretary of the National Security Council, he came out publicly and said that 90% of secrecy is turf protection, and it's basically covering up fraud, waste, and abuse. And oh, by the way, in this 75 billion a year that we're spending on secret intelligence, over 10 billion of that, probably as much as 15 billion of that, is so-called classification and so forth. Now, where I would go with this, and I think the judge that just convicted the two people that were supporting Cuba was very ignorant. Um, because when you get to blanket police state uh, convictions for leaking information that is actually in the public interest, uh, you've lost touch with your society. Uh, you've lost touch with your public. And this young man may have been indiscriminate, but I would give him the benefit of the doubt I would publicize all of those cables and then I would start firing some of the people who wrote them. Because the fact is what they're doing in our name is criminal, okay? And they don't think that. They think they're being really cool diplomats, you know, moving, manipulating, whatever. But the reality is most diplomats are messenger boys. And, uh, and the, the message is written by a political appointee, a 30-something, uh, who, who basically wore out some shoe leather on the campaign and was made a Deputy Assistant Secretary of State uh, as a reward. I mean, I, these people are beneath contempt. Uh, so we have a real problem in how we don't govern ourselves. Yes, sir. And then we'll come. Appreciate talking to you. I have actually all of your books. Uh, someone at the DNI's office had left them in his desk, and I commandeered them. <laughs> that was probably at Elliot Jardine's. He doesn't read. Um, anyway, I'll take that as a yes. Um, speaking as someone who was an intelligence analyst and someone who also helped to write the DNI's classification guidance and has reviewed the CIA's classification guidance and current contractor, worked for CID, couple comments in general. Um, one, Bradley Manning, complete asshole. He should have reported any war crimes, anything he thought was a war crime, to CID to investigate because he probably fucked up the prosecution of any war crime that might have existed. Uh, that's, a, that's a very good point. Uh, however, I have found in my experience that CIA doesn't really exist, I mean CID, and that most things you report to CID never get investigated. Like I said, I was with CID and every case that ever came up was prosecuted mm -hmm. successfully. Mm -hmm. I've never heard anyone go to CID with a claim that was never investigated and prosecuted. Well, I'll take your word for it, but I'm pretty sure you never got a diplomat fired. True. Okay. But then again, but in the government, in you cannot fire anybody for incompetence. They have to come in drunk, call someone a racial slur, and you know, rape them. Actually, that's a feature. In order to get raped. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean. Okay, you know, let's let's stop there, well, please, please well, respect the crowd. Let's stop there. Yeah. Okay, let's please. Okay, well, off off that uh, regarding open source, just little comment to everybody. 
I think that a few people have taken it to heart as far as water consumption is concerned. Uh, note to all public service announcement, smelling like a dirty, nasty bastard does not make you a better hacker. Please take a goddamn shower. Do you, uh, do you have documentation on that last point? Yes, sir, in the back. I wanted to uh, get your thoughts on the mandatory embedding of identification chips in humans, and if you still think we're heading towards that. You will be assimilated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, no, look, I mean, I love the, the, I forget what it was, true lies or whatever, where, where this guy had to dig in and pull the chip out and whatever. I mean, my son just put, my youngest son just put his US passport through the washing machine. Um, and of course, you should put your oh yeah, you should put all your passports in the microwave. Um, but the, the the problem we have is that the U.S. government is full of good people who are completely out of control. Uh, the U.S. government is basically trying to micromanage shit it does not understand, um, and uh, it is just it's 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 lunacy. Um, the the Israelis. I mean, it, you know, as much as I get annoyed by the Israelis manipulating Congress and lying and stealing and all this other stuff, there are some things they do well. Uh, I established a requirement in 1988 for being able to detect explosives at 500 meters, uh, regardless of the container they were in, because we're still stuck in container land, which is why in El Salvador in the 80s, um, they would put their mines in wooden boxes. Um, and I talked to an Israeli officer. He said, oh, we solved that problem years ago. I said, what was it? He says, it's a dog. <laughs> uh, well, he's right. And when the Israelis put people on an airline, they search their luggage, and they question them, and they make calls to the phone numbers that these individuals are required to give. They know who is getting on that airplane. We have something that tells us if your vagina has expanded lately, OK? <laughs> It's just nuts. Uh, so let's, let's go on there uh, in the back, and then we'll come forward. Good morning, sir. I was curious if you could speak to uh, global monetary policy, the stability of financial situation in our country, and should I buy gold? Well, you missed the, you missed the gold uh, opportunity. Plus, I'll tell you what, there's some very strong rumors on the market that something's coming out that's going to drive the price of gold way down because it's basically going to discover all the gold on the planet. Uh, no, nah, you know, Afghanistan, on the one hand, the Chinese know what they're doing. They're, they're building roads and railways to be able to mine the copper and the other stuff that they want. We're actually inventing minerals to justify being there 10 years later. Um, Al Qaeda is actually right here down at the Wardoff, Australia. Uh, you know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's nuts. Can you speak to what this market rumor might be? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to give it too much credence, but someone I really believe in who follows gold very closely. And also, that's the other thing. Uh, there's some real panic over the fact that the New York Fed evidently uh, diluted a whole bunch of gold and put some titanium in the middle. Tungsten. Uh, yeah, at tungsten. Thank you, tungsten. And... Um, there's also some real fear that the Chinese who place some puts or whatever on gold are going to demand the physical gold rather than sort of, oh, yeah, oops, and then they're going to test it. Okay, I mean, talk about having us by the short hairs. Um, this is real interesting. I personally feel that we need to disassociate wealth from fiction, um, and we really need to get back to local ownership, eliminate uh, absentee landlords, uh, the whole bit. Just as a minor point, which I made before in my lecture, but some of you may not have been there, uh, William Grider, one of my favorite writers, uh, has written a book called Come Home America, in which he points out that um, real assets grew by five times in value, whereas financial assets grew by 17 times in value. So 17 minus 5, 12 is the fraud index for Wall Street. Okay. I mean, how we can allow these guys to give themselves bonuses is, is, is only understandable in the context of the White House being a subsidiary of Wall Street and being absolutely divorced from the public interest. 
Okay, up here, sir. Hey, I just had a quick question regarding, I guess you'd say leadership with the uh, intelligence communities. Now, I, know, I have a bunch of people I know that have worked in the past for very, various intelligence agencies out there, specifically uh, NRO. My roommate is currently a uh, intern with the NSA. Um, I know somebody who, a military Yeah, you just got him fired, but okay. <laughs> anyway, and so what's your question? All right. Anyway, my point was, um, the, every, I actually know other people who work for the NSA as well. Every person I know who works for the NSA has said they're all, they all come away with saying that they never want to work their full time after interns, they, they all want to quit. Um, they, uh, they have all said that they're um, paranoid as all hell, to put it bluntly, of everybody, and to the point where they actually, the, the rumors of the NSA doing weird things, they, I don't know, I mean, I, I really wouldn't be um, too skeptical of them anymore after the amount of crap I've heard of NSA telling people to watch your neighbor, watch your coworker, you don't know what's going on. Uh, NRO, I've heard people complain, complain just has no central leadership. They, um, well, you know, there's something called Jim Clapper's harem. Um, basically in the 1990s, and I was, I was at GM 14 with these people when they were 14s, there were a number of people like Joan Dempsey and, um, God, I forget the names, but, but basically there are a bunch of girls that Jim adopted, and uh, now they're running the intelligence community on his behalf. And we just moved one very nice, uh, oh, Trish Long just took over the NRO. And she took over the NRO because she's one of Jim Clapper's harem girls. Uh, and I'm not talking sexually uh, in most cases. <laughs> but even the DNI, who was supposed to fix all this stuff, the last thing I read in the news about them was they were butting heads with the uh, director of CIA over various control of various things. I mean, it's like. Well, the, the, the DNI is a bastard child who should never have been built. Uh, I mean, the DNI is like 4,000 staff members, and what we basically did was we promoted every asshole that should have been retired one more time uh, to the DNI staff. Um, and, you know, there's some good people there. There's some smart people there. But there isn't a single one of them that could write the book that I wrote in 2000. Actually, I wrote it in the 1990s and then put it together after the Washington Post got me to tell them that I had written a book. Um, so, uh, it's a funny story. Washington Post calls me and says, what are your comments on these two books? And I say, well, what about my book? At, the point, at that point in time, it was a binder with my articles, but it had a really cool title on intelligence, spies, and secrecy in an open world. And so they wrote about my book, so I decided I better write it. And, uh, <laughs> and I did. Uh, and it was a wonderful inspiration. So, what kind of point are you trying to get to other than the fact that the national intelligence community is the worst of all possible worlds? It's a bureaucracy with too much money that can hide its mistakes through secrecy. My simple question then was the, what do you think is your best, your best bet on how to fix the leadership problem? How would you do it differently? The DNI I don't think it's going to happen, but if I were DNI, I'd unfuck that place in 90 days. Uh, and I'd start by making the secretaries the uh, leaders of the various agencies for at least 30 days. You know, the, no, yeah, look, the secretaries are honest. And they know who's a bullshitter. Um, and I, I really have enormous respect for secretaries who basically pull their bosses along and, 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 and protect their bosses. Uh, so in the back there, and then we'll come forward here. Uh, this is more in the spirit of a PSA also. Um, you know, a lot of people are just leaving the trash next to their chair, and then someone else has to come and clean it up. And it's just, it's hard to respect that because we have to clean up our own mess before we start yapping away about cleaning up everyone else's mess, you know? I mean, if we can't even pick up the plastic cups next to our chairs, you know, who are we to criticize BP, whoever? I mean, that's, that's all I'm gonna say about that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, uh, next. Uh, in the back and then we'll come forward. Um, this is a slightly different question. What, what's your personal investment philosophy? If you had $20,000 to invest in something, it sounds like you're down on Wall Street. Is there anybody that you actually respect to take your money and do something good Look, with Look, my wife gave me $30,000 in savings, and instead of putting it into Cisco in 1992, I wasted it on my company. Uh, I really would not ask me for investment advice. 
Uh, <laughs> what do you think BP is a good investment right now, for example? Um, well, but, but again, you know, I'm really troubled. I think we should get rid of the stock market. Uh, I'm not at all sure it's, it's ever going to be honest. Uh, and, you know, Mark Lewis wrote a book called Liar's Poker in the 1980s. And he was recently interviewed, and he said, I never thought they'd get away with it for another 20 years. Uh, but they have. And now we've just bailed them out. I mean, the, the idea of the U.S. government giving Wall Street $8 trillion and, and people not burning tires in the streets just confounds me. I'm suffering from cognitive dissonance right now. Uh, so I wouldn't go to me for investment advice. But I'll tell you, if I had to do it over again, I think all things being equal, I'd move to a bay um, one quarter inch down on the Pacific coast of Washington state and start growing marijuana. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm from South Louisiana, and uh, all those places you see on the news, I grew up around Fushan, uh, uh, Grand Tet, all those places, fishing. Um, the bird's foot that you see, the Mississippi River Delta, when I was 13 and running around that place, there was 50% more land mass on it than there is now. Mm. We lose 25 square miles a year. That's mm. something like a football field every 38 mm -hmm. minutes. Mm -hmm. wow. We have 30% of the coastal marsh of the United States and we lose 90% we've lost 90% of it. Mm -hmm. The Gulf Coast is responsible for something like 50% of the shrimp harvest per year. Our coast, we're, I'm sorry, we're fucked. I'm, my, I'm listening. I, I wanted to move back to Louisiana and help make the state better. These problems existed before Katrina. All these issues with Katrina and the Gulf Coast loss those are all the fault of the oil company before BP did this. Mr. Go was one of the, the Mississippi River Gulf outlet was made by oil companies to increase shipping and they shut it down because it didn't get any traffic and it increased by 50% over its lifetime, the width, and then Katrina pushed this huge storm surge up into the middle of the city and destroyed it. Well, let me take, all, your, let me take so, your comment well, forward. My, my whole question is, where do I have any optimism? Like, my state's done. We're, we're your next welfare boondoggle for the United States. We're, we're done. We have no coastal economy. Oil and seafood are done for us. That's all we had. So where do you have any hope that we can... Corporate malfeasance has been wrecking the country for 150 years. They've been all over, you know, the uh, Army okay. Corps of Engineers has been doing Let this Let me forever. get an answer in. So where do you have hope for the future that will fix any of this shit? Uh, first off, there's a wonderful book called um, Acts of God. And the point that it makes is that paving over the wetlands was not a cool idea. Uh, because that, in fact, is a major issue. I've reviewed a number of books on climate and, and weather and change and so forth. And what it really turns out is we destroyed the Mississippi River Delta area and the Corps of Engineers has been a major force for destruction. Um, and it's all been done because nobody thought this through. And the precautionary principle wasn't followed. And, and as horrible as Louisiana is, it is matched easily by major problems elsewhere. Um, because, I, again, Charles Perrault's book, uh, Catastrophe, is really excellent. I mean. We do more damage with industrial uh, misbehavior uh, than any terrorist ever could. In fact, in the, in the book that I just wrote, um, a really guy I really admire, Steve Carmel uh, from Merck Shipping, he told me that basically a terrorist incident like in Baltimore Harbor is nothing more than a train wreck for the shipping industry. But the idiot decisions that the government makes in the 30 days after that cost him billions of dollars because the U.S. government overreacts and, and so forth. And I wasn't smart enough to think of it on the day, but 9-11 would have been a lot cheaper 
if we had simply said to every pilot, tell your passengers any asshole that gets up in the next 30 minutes is dead. Uh, and we'll give a presidential medal to the first class passenger that kills them. Uh, you know, I mean, it, 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 it's just we, we, we so overreact. I mean, TSA is, is pathetic. Uh, and, and these machines and, and taking off my shoes and having to take off my belt. I mean, Al Qaeda is laughing. When 9 when, 11 when happened, I, I wrote a short blog piece on how uh, we spend, for every, for every dollar that Al Qaeda or anyone else spends to fuck us up, we have to spend $500,000 in, re in return. It's now up to $5 million, okay? I mean, we cannot keep doing this. Uh, we are reaching the limit of our idiocy. Uh, and I, what's that? Great movie. Great, great movie. Absolutely. A, a wonderful movie. I have reviewed it on, on uh, so all of you go have babies. Uh, <laughs> we need your help. It's a national 